about some let's talk about some positive DC news. I got nothing. Deep boys, what you got? <laughs> uh Titans on the DC streaming service. Yes, yes. Titans on the DC streaming service. We got some mini details about episode five of Titans. Yes. Uh showing the showing the Doom Patrol, man. Yeah, it was titled. The episode Doom title is Doom Patrol. So that's a Beast Boy story if I ever heard one, because that was a Beast Boy's original team. So I'm yeah. I'm thinking that that's gonna be sort of uh a Beast Boy Origins thing, but Doom Patrol. I haven't read the original X Men team. <laughs> yeah, right, right, <laughs> right. So I mean, I haven't really, you know, there's people asking us to talk about it. Like, unless you want a a, a Doom Patrol explain video, which I can't do because I'm admittedly not an expert in Doom Patrol. I can't really say much other than I want more Titans details. The fact that they have an episode five script written of a reportedly 13 episode mm -hmm. uh, season is a good sign. How far along they are in filming, I don't know. But having episode five written as a script means that the show is moving along. It's a good sign for people who are worried about Titans. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I, I personally, a lot of people are fans of Beast Boy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I'm not crazy about Beast Boy, but, you know. It's, I don't care either way about Beast Boy. I hate to say it. I mean, he fits into the Titans. I, I get it. The Teen Titans. Um, personally, I mean, when I think about the Titans, I am excited for it. I'm really interested in seeing what they do. Uh, Absolutely. With a number of those characters. I'm really interested in them. And that's finally getting a chance to see, like, a Nightwing or, or, or Dick Grayson transitioning into Nightwing. And, yeah. and just that idea of transitioning, um, I would like to see – I don't want to see the team form, in like, right away. I want them to really mm. take their time – the, show the characters kind of really get to know each other before they even say we are the titans we're together and we're a team you know if they're going to spend time let's say looking into the backstory of all these characters have an episode that's about the doom patrol mm. um you know and, and kind of really drawing from all these interesting aspects of the dc universe i really want them to kind of take their time and, and i want to savor uh what hopefully will be a good show yeah yeah uh, when it's when it's all said and done because I mean, if they could, you know, change my opinion on Beast Boy, or at least make me like him on this show, all the better. I, mean, I think the actor is a good choice. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think most of the actors and actresses that they've, they've picked are, are pretty good choices for the show. And, and the costumes Absolutely. that we've seen thus far are pretty good. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, what I want to say about DC's Titans is DC Titans could be the breath of fresh air for what I believe is maybe a problem that the DC TV shows have, mm -hmm. and that... There are a lot of DC TV shows, and it may be that there's some oversaturation and thus a loss in quality. Yeah. And I'm looking at the Hourverse, and I wanted to talk to you about that. Mm -hmm. I think bringing up Titans is a is a fantastic segue into that. Mm -hmm. Titans being on the the DC streaming service. I mean, there's rumors that they're casting Batman, and to be honest, you can't have Robin without Batman in some sense. <clears throat> yeah. Um. You know, they've got Raven, Starfire, Beast Boy, um, Hawk, Dove. This is interesting. You know what I'm saying? They've got, they're building out a DC universe over on that side of things. And to be honest with you, by just, just, just the notion that somebody like, for example, Batman could be included in the show in some way, shape, or form, it already has something that the Hourverse and the DC TV shows. You know, and, and by DC TV hours, I'm also including Black Lightning in there. I'm not so much talking about Gotham, Lucifer, or uh, I Zombie, um, because those are sort of like in their own, they're in their own uh, sort of uh, arena. Mm -hmm. But these hourverse shows, there's something about it that feels lacking lately. Black Lightning obviously has been a breath of fresh air, but Black Lightning, uh, the the during the, I, I should say, the promotional run before prior to Black, Black Lightning, they've sort of made this case that Black Lightning separate. It's its own world. Like they've been going hard to say, like it's sort of in its, uh, it's, it's in its own bubble. And when I look at DC TV's Titans, I'm like, that's a chance to expand. That's the chance for us to see a DC world that we can be proud of. Not, you know, the Hourverse, which sort of feels like, you know, I've heard this this term thrown around. Costco Justice League or, you know, uh, <laughs> Justice League Light or things like that, you know, but, you know, what are your thoughts on the matter, man? I mean, are there too many DC TV shows or hour shows? What say you, man? What do you feel about Titans for, you know, in terms of the future of DC TV products? 
Yeah, I mean, I think in terms of the Arrowverse, what appears to be the two biggest problems, uh, one, it's too much for them to handle behind the scenes. The mm. scenes, I'm sorry. Um, because there's a lot of writing that has to go into this. Uh, mm. We're talking about like 23 episode seasons for yeah. four plus shows. Um, that's a lot. I mean, one show yeah. is a lot for a team of people, uh, mm. let alone um, all of these shows that are, you know, most of them interconnected. They have to, you know, kind of at least acknowledge each other to a certain degree. Uh, right. And I think the other problem is there are too many characters. There are too many people on these shows. And I don't know if that yeah. is like a normal thing in TV shows or if it's, it's like a CW thing. Because, mm. you know, you, I don't know, you, I guess you want to keep all the actors, they're all, because they're all actors slash models, they, all, it also kind of plays into the marketing for the vibe of the CW. Um, sure. You know, and, and people do, they are kind of excited over these actors, like these actors mm. are rather popular with the people that watch these shows. Yeah, um, yeah. But it's at the expense of the story that you're telling. Sure. And that's usually the thing. I I think that's the main problem with the C, the CW shows is they don't always put the story first, or they they put other things on the same level, you know, give the same importance when the story should always be number one. You know, mm. you shouldn't mm. be afraid to use like a big time actor or, or someone that even that, that is well established and and you know, I don't know, write them out or kill them or whatever the heck makes mm. sense for the show. But um, you know, you have a lot of series regulars. If you look at Flash, we've talked about Flash and how, at this point, we don't know what the majority of the cast is doing. Like, it's just like, what is going on here? Uh, you can say the same thing about Arrow. Um, you know, Legends, oddly enough, is kind of making it's making a good uh, 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 it's effort. Its own niche for itself. Yes, yeah, it's, it's making a good effort at using everyone that it's got on there. Yeah, yeah. Probably the best out of the hourverse, if I had to say. Yeah, and and yeah. that like I'm I'm watching I'm I'm watching Black Lightning for example, and I'm trying to see if this will happen to that show. Like I'm trying to see because it's happened to all the shows at this point. I'm trying to see oh, how, sure. how this kind of just develops over time, and when's when is the point of no return? Like what's the point where it's like okay, we've reached critical mass in terms of how sure. many people are on the show. Sure. Uh, I mean, with Arrow season one and Flash season one. We were in love. We were enamored with those shows. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we were, like, yesterday we were just talking about season one of Arrow and how it was just pretty much focused on Oliver. Yeah, and, you yeah. Know, yeah, they had his family on there, but it all tied back to Oliver and him becoming the right. Green Arrow. And right. now everything, everything, you know, there's, there's, everyone has a history. Everyone has something that has happened throughout these seasons. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if they necessarily need to keep catering to every little bit of a storyline. I guess maybe that's what they're trying to do or they they think about the 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 history of these characters and they're like okay, well we have to maybe do something to add a little bit more to what Thea has been up to. Uh, sure. Just a little something throw it, throw it out there for her and add a little something yeah. for for Diggle or for that character, for this character, for Felicity and this and that. Right. Um and you know, I don't make shows, I'm not a writer, so I don't know exactly what it is that's going on behind the scenes, but the end yeah. product is is a bloated one um right. and, and i think at the core it's the fact that the cast is too big you, we gotta we gotta start trimming and that's not an easy thing to say i mean i'm sure, sure. everyone like you, they work with these people you, to an extent right like, we're not trying your, to have people lose jobs either yeah yeah i you mean know, to an extent are working to an extent like this is their extended family so like, you want to keep them on i mean honestly if we were all on the show i would want to keep us all on because you, right, you know right. a paycheck you get to eat Feed your family. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You get, uh, affords more opportunities. But I don't know. I, I don't know what direction they can go to alleviate this. Like, they need to kind of let off some steam to kind of... <laughs> there's too much... There's too, too tightly packed. There's too much going on here. I don't know if it's like move horizontally, make another show. Maybe that's mm -hmm. too much. Maybe offload mm. it to like a, st a streaming service. Maybe have a show mm. there with some of these other characters that don't have mm. enough shine on their respective shows i don't know what it is that can be done but we you know we've been kind of down on the arrowverse as a whole like some, something something's off it's not as exciting yeah 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 i mean man i don't even know where to start um i do have a couple points uh just to, to piggyback off of your points mm -hmm. uh one thing i wanted to mention about black lightning too about the fear that they're getting too many characters mm -hmm. 
one of the things that's most beautiful about Black Lightning is that they're focusing on Jefferson Pierce, but they're also trying to highlight the people of, of Freeland. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's something that Alvarez shows haven't really done, where True. the citizens sort of are brought to prominence. That prominence. That being said, like, I mean, before I go into the next point, <laughs> the Glades and Arrow is a perfect example of that. They're like, yo, the Glades, that's a badass neighborhood, man, just because there's mass smoke <laughs> going on there. <laughs> And they tell there's like mad smoke when they go there. Listen, and then they, t- they tell you, yo, the bad stuff happened here. Just... What, what they did is they saw uh, Batman Begins and they saw the Narrows and they're like, yeah, we want that. <laughs> we want that I on the show. Listen, you're sort of not wrong because that arrow was highly inspired by the Dark Knight movies. You know what I mean? So the Dark Knight trilogies, you know, yeah. so that's a fair statement. Um, Black Lightning also has to be careful because their two main, like, familial members to Black Lightning, his daughters, mm-hmm. they're also set to become... Well, we definitely know Anissa is going to become the hero known as Thunder, and mm-hmm. in the comics, his daughter becomes Lightning. Mm-hmm. So, there's definitely some... There's definitely going to be some growth in terms of that that team. It's going to be a Black Lightning family affair. So, that could sometimes... And Black Lightning is kind of OP, as it is. You know? And now his daughter's got super strength. One of his daughters got super strength. Like, we got to be careful here that this doesn't get turned to something, you know, where we're just like, all right, you're coming, becoming the other Arrowverse shows. Yeah. Now, I do want to bring up a point about the, the things that I feel sort of may, may, I'm not saying they are the problem with the Arrowverse, but sort of add to this perfect perfect storm of things that sort of make it a little bit lackluster lately. One of the things is the, the length of the seasons. Hmm. Now, that's something that the DC streaming service titan show is going to benefit from 13 episodes great so we're looking at something along the lines of netflix where yeah. the story is probably going to be a little bit more streamlined a little less filler it's going to be a little more direct you know a little more direct like that's one thing that the Arrowverse shows don't do well is their villains of the week it's just sometimes you just get this villain of the week and, and it's just very, so evident that like okay this is the villain of the week <laughs> you know it's just yeah. it it's sort of the show feels like it's going through the motions. You know, they'll, they'll they'll have throwaway lines like, you know, like in the Flash, where like they keep reminding you, oh, there's no new updates on the Thinkers front, just in case you were wondering where the main <laughs> villain is. You know, like things like that. You know, Titans is going to get to build to, you know, tell their story, and also they have the benefit of it being the first season. You know, something that we've said these shows do tend to do well, t- tend to do well. Legend of Tomorrow season one, I would say, was probably the worst season of Legends thus far. Oof. Season three hasn't been done, has isn't done, but I would say season two was a, was a you know an upgrade from season one. But so, but you know, Titans is going to get to introduce these characters over time. So we're going to get to know these characters. Just seeing episode five, Doom Patrol, like their their storytelling is going to remain interesting because we're going to get to learn more about these people as time goes along slowly. So it helps. You know what I'm saying? That, that that helps. Another thing that I want to bring up is budget. Yep. Now, I don't know what the budget for the Titan show is versus the Arrowverse shows, but look at the costumes, Robin. Look at the costumes for Hawk and Dove. Mm-hmm. There's quality there. I'm not sure I've seen a costume like that on the Arrowverse. The rumor is that the Adams suit is probably one of the most more expensive suits, but yeah. generally, generally speaking, we see like these leather outfits on the CW and Likewise, sometimes the, the CG budget sort of just, you know, it gets at us. And thus, we feel like it's somewhat limited. Now, I don't know what Titans, the Titans budget is going to be, but I can say just looking at those costumes, they're putting some some moolah into this this whole thing, man. Yeah. They're definitely putting some dinero into this. And I mean, Jeff money ain't is not, <laughs> he's not going to let this uh, struggle. Right, right. So there is something to say for you know, the budget. Because, you know, sometimes with CW, their action sort of sort of small scale. Like, you know, we see that, for example, Supergirl, prime mm-hmm. example of having, like, these super-powered characters, and they sometimes don't get to do amazing things. It's mm-hmm. great for... We say it's great for TV. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the Flash. They literally, like, Mark Guggenheim was like, yo, it's, it's honestly too expensive to have Kid Flash and Flash on the show at the same time using those speedster powers. Yep. You usually have to knock off one, which is expensive, or write one of them out. Yep. Titans, by 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 definition, with like, like Starfire, like Beast Boy, those are gonna Raven, those powers. That's gonna take some sort of. That's gonna take some CG there. 
is definitely going to have to be, you know, some sort of uh, budgetary uh, leniency there. You know what I'm saying? So that's part of it, too. Um, also, the idea that with the CW, they try to vary in tones for their shows, and sometimes it doesn't work. With Titans, and, and I'm going to actually shift to Young Justice Season 3 or Young Justice Outsiders. So the showrunners, uh, we're talking about Young Justice Outsiders, I think during San Diego Comic-Con uh, 2017, and they were saying that they're going to be able to tell more mature storylines because they're on their own streaming service. They don't have to worry about Cartoon Network hovering over them. And it made me think, like, is the DC, are the DC TV shows or DC streaming service shows going to get to tell some more mature storylines? And maturity doesn't equally, like, immediately mean something's going to be great. Mm -hmm. But it can allow for variation in storytelling. For example, the Arrowverse, one thing we always get tired of, people die with zero consequences. Mm -hmm. People people die, they come back. <laughs> the, the Black Canary, Laurel Lance, you know, she dies. Oh, let's bring in Black Siren. Sarah Lance has come back a couple times. You know, like people are people aren't getting hurt. People aren't dropping. You don't you get you don't get this sense of imminent danger. You know, and maybe maybe Titans will be willing to tackle that. Maybe Titans will be willing to tackle that. Like Arrow has had so many characters on that show, and the fact that only Black Canary has died is a little bit crazy. A little bit insane you yeah. know like the fact that mr terrific is still alive is almost <laughs> it's almost laughable i see your boy though that's listen he's i like mr terrific from the comics but i mean this mr terrific like he's out here fighting people who are dangerous and he's surviving yeah you know so uh, there's much more that goes into it and i'm not saying each one of those things makes or breaks the hour verse mm -hmm. but what i'm trying to i'm just trying to make the case that there's a perfect storm of this ain't that great going on there. Yeah. And the fact that you have someone like Jeff Johns, who is now at the, you know, at the top of DC pretty much, you know, he's, uh, he's up there working directly on this show. I think there's going to be a, an attention paid to quality control. Not that there isn't one paid to for the hour verse, but cause he's written episodes for the hour verse shows. And consequently those episodes actually been some of the best hour verse episodes, but you ain't hear that for me. <laughs> uh, but He's going to be involved in this, and he's directly involved in this. And they got somebody like uh, I think K Akiva Goldsman, mm -hmm. like that per like that's that's a big name. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's a big name. So I think the DC t TV streaming service has the opportunity to sort of breathe a breath of breath of fresh air and extend in a different direction. And honestly, I would like to see some of the Hourverse shows either end or rotate out for new characters and there's new something some an evolution of these shows so like you know arrow's the veteran but i actually argue that arrow might be one of the better shows on the the, the arrowverse right now mm -hmm. but arrows like you you're you've been you've been sort of trotting around with with oliver queen for a while now you know having him get his identity revealed so many times you know having his identity oh is he the green arrow you know it's it's you're, it's becoming derivative. And I think that is one of the biggest problems of the Arrowverse. It's becoming derivative. And because of all these new characters, it's very difficult to write new storylines for them. Yeah. The source material isn't necessarily very kind to some of these characters. Uh, plus, you know, you're limited, limited by budget. And you're also limited by the fact that, like, these characters are more, more or less additions to you know, the universe and not the main characters you built the show around. And you've, they've taken these characters and sort of changed them so much from who they used to be that sometimes it's hard to fit them into, you know, fit those comic book stories into the show stories. For example, like character like Vibe, like Vibe is considerably different in the, in the flash than he is in the comics. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like this guy's, he's like a break dancing, like hip hop artist, you know what I'm saying? Like, and he's, well, he's actually a, a very good combatant. Mm -hmm. Cisco, <laughs> he's not being a teddy bear, man. C Cisco's a very good bum ass is what he is. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's, are there too many DC TV shows? I don't, I feel like that's too much of a simple answer hmm. or a question rather. I just feel like there needs to be a, more attention paid to the quality control of yeah. these shows. And I, once again, I'm not, I don't want to judge the people that are taking care of these shows. You know, but there needs to be more attention paid, more care paid to how these shows are are telling their stories. And 
some of these characters like Thea, she's not doing nothing on Arrow. Who? Case closed. You're ex absolutely. <laughs> You're absolutely right for saying it. You know, like <laughs> Detective Lance, love that character. And I also love Thea. I love a lot of these characters. But Detective Lance, like, this man, they put this man through so much that he's he's sort of like one of the best characters that Arrow has, but also because of the bloatedness of Arrow, it's sort of like, damn, like, y'all need to put this dude out of his misery or let him ride off into the sunset either, or mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I don't know. There's there's a lot that goes into it, you know. <laughs> Turning back to the budget thing, you know, Mark Guggenheim, you know, reportedly said that some of these, most of these suits cost about five thousand dollars. He said he wasn't entirely sure, but that's what he thought that they cost. Um, and I can look at that Robin suit, or at least the top part of it, definitely the Hawk and Dove suit. And I'm like, yo, I don't know if that's a five thousand dollars suit right there. That looks pretty expensive. <laughs> <laughs> that looks pretty expensive. And the fact that they're willing to do Starfire, I'm wondering how they're going to do that. There's rumors that Trigon is going to be, you know. Most people are theorizing that Trigon's going to be part of this. I'm wondering how they're going to do that. I mean, that could be pretty simple. Supernatural does de- demonic stuff all the time mm-hmm. with a very limited budget. But, but yeah, man. You know, I feel like I've, I've been, you know, I'm sort of ranting at this point, but... That's fine. You know. I mean, yeah, we've felt this way for a while. Yeah, yeah. And we keep looking to new things. Like, and that's... And that's when, you, when, you're, when you're hyped for the new things, like, sometimes it's just genuine hype. But I felt that my hype for these new things are like, hey, there's something new I can be excited about because I'm not excited about these things. Like Kid Flash being on Legends of Tomorrow. Like Kid Flash, I'm not a huge fan of how they how they view Kid Flash. And quite frankly, his personality was way better when they first introduced him compared to now because they've sort of dulled him down. They've sort of watered him down. So it's like when I look to him going to Legends, I'm like, yeah, something different. It's not even that I'm like, yo, Kid Flash, yeah, he's going to Legends. Yeah. Ideally, he should be with Barry Allen. He should be with Flash, being a, learning how to be the Flash for the future. So that when Barry dies, like in the comics, <laughs> Flash Wally West can take over. You know what I mean? But they're they're not taking those type of risks. They're not taking those type of risks with these shows. Yeah, and and I don't you know. know. I mean, there's still life there because this season of Arrow has been good. I mean, last season was really great, uh, yeah. and the Crisis on Earth X crossover was fantastic. That's a perfect example of what some collaboration can do because they collaborated on that. They worked together on that. And what, you know, time, planning, and and focus can do. And definitely an increased budget because those episodes certainly cost more than other episodes that they've made. Very, like, and, and just the, just them rendering Red Tornado, you know, that was that cost them some money. And when it comes to budget, I mean, that's part of the reason why these seasons are so long as well. I mean, more episodes means more commercials. More commercials yeah. means more money. Yeah. So. Yeah. You're right. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. But, you know, to wrap up this conversation, man, DC TV Titans is a great addition. Um, I'd love to see what else they got on the streaming service. Are there too many shows? <laughs> it hurts me to say, but there just might be. There just might be too many shows, or at least they're not doing things that are compelling with these shows. I would say this. I think there's too many characters. That's what I'll say. I think there's too many characters on each respective show. Mm-hmm. Love Martian Manhunter, but come on, guys. Come on. That is a character that's just not getting any work. None. None. Like, I'm like, come on, dude. Like, Martian Manhunter is one of the strongest guys, one of the one of the strongest characters in the DC universe, man. They introduced Superman, and, you know, I understand you can't do this for every TV show, but, like, Superman's out there. You guys are struggling with rain. I'm like, yo, Superman is a phone call away. <laughs> Meanwhile, on Arrow, uh, Diggle and Green Arrow need an Uber, and they call Flash to speed them over to, to Kane and James. And I'm like, guys, this sort of creates the issue of why doesn't he call the Flash more often? So <laughs> there's a connection issue there. There's just... There's a lot going on. And I think that they need to sort of just let these characters I think they need to focus more on 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 the, the characters that they started on. Yep. And hone down their core. Like Killer Frost Caitlin, she needs to go. Got it. Even if she's even if she's no, she needs to go somewhere else and have her be recurring. It, it it's it's tough. It's tough to say. You know what I mean? But that's how I feel, man. Deep voice, I'll turn it over to you for some final words before we wrap this thing up. Listen, I mean, we have complaints. 
you know, you take the the good with the bad, but there's certainly a lot more good than there is bad. And I agree. Like, like you said, I mean, even even with what we've got, we still get some decent stuff. We still get some interesting episodes, and we'll, absolutely, we'll, we'll see how this all culminates for the Arrowverse. But there's a lot out there as well. DC streaming service, Titans looks dope. Disney's bringing out that stuff. Marvel movies, all that good stuff. So we'll see. I mean, if we have to pivot, we have to pivot. But there's it's a great time to be a comic book nerd. Couldn't have said it better myself, man. Yep. With that being said, guys, thank you guys for tuning in to this edition of the Spectacular Spoilers Show. By all means, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Drop a like for us so you can help this video get out there. And also, turn on that little bell icon right next to the subscribe button so you can be up to date with the latest and greatest coming from the Spectacular Spoil League. As always, it's great to see everybody. We'll see you guys on the next one. We headed on out of here. Peace out. Please don't let DCTV be bad anymore. Listen, man. Don't compete over here. <laughs> you, you can't compete, man, because I'll hit you with that boobity black, 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 lightning is back. They're waiting for that scatting. Skibbity, scabbity, mm. scoobity, bobbity, mm. bibbity, bobbity. Bars. Hit you with that lobbity. <laughs>